Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It's been a very long time. So today I have a very sad uh, video to make. Today we're going to go ahead and jump into pretty much all of the Righteous Fire nerfs. Um, before I go ahead and jump into this, I want to show you guys what Righteous Fire looked like back in Harvest League because it's not going to be like this anymore. Um, and I also want to state that I would not really recommend starting Righteous Fire anymore as a League starter. Um, at least for players who are kind of newer to the game and have never necessarily really like played the archetype before because it's going to be much 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 more difficult to get your damage scaling on the high-end content okay oh actually there we go so this is my you know oh god oh my this is pretty much my fully decked out righteous fire character not from last league but from harvest league right or I have my super, super, super GG Helm. Or, you know, I'll just remove inspiration from there so you don't even need to see inspiration. Okay, so that was, you know, that was missing a link. I didn't use inspiration there. But with that being said, let me go ahead and jump into the actual nerfs of what happened to Righteous Fire. So. <clears throat> Righteous Fire. Righteous Fire. So, number one, the first thing that happened is the Inquisitor Ascendancy that we love to play. Pious Path, which is the one that gave us full ailment immunity, now no longer grants ailment immunity of any kind. So one thing that sucked with Inquisitor is you don't actually have the biggest life pool. You just have a big effective life pool with your energy shield included. Ailments don't care about your energy shield, meaning shock, freeze, chill, don't care about what your uh, ES value is. It just takes your life value, meaning it's much easier to get frozen, chilled, and shocked with a low uh, actual HP numeric. That's why like Mind Over Matter builds get stun locked very easily, same thing, because the effective life of your character might be high, but your actual HP pool is small. Next up, Elemental Focus got hit. This one was kind of expected. Uh, it does kind of suck as we use Ellie Focus on Firewall or Flame Wall and on Righteous Fire. Uh, burn Damage got hit. Burn Damage hit actually sucks a ton, um, but regardless, you know, Lost damage on Flame Wall and Righteous Fire there. Uh, Conch Effect got nerfed. Conch Effect being one of our strongest support gems for Righteous Fire. Got smacked in the face. Efficacy got nerfed. Um, efficacy got nerfed for... Not for RF because you uh, this part doesn't really matter. You don't do spell damage with RF. But for Flame Wall, it got, it got smacked real hard. The duration for Flame Wall goes down. Not too big of a deal. But it also lost the spell damage. So Flame Wall got hit on Ellie Focus, on Burn Damage, and Efficacy. Also gets hit on Control Destruction. Uh, Control Destruction being uh, one of the main main links again. So this one wasn't that bad. It was 5% actually. Inspiration kind of sucks because we would use Inspiration on our Flame Wall and our Righteous Fire. So Inspiration got dicked. And Flame Wall itself got nuked. Flame Wall being our single target. Um, you can see here, Flame Wall, like, literally got butched. Like, it's just, I mean, it's it's still doable. It's just what sucks is, is Righteous Fire was not a very high single target damage build to begin with. So getting hit with all of these nerfs would be kind of okay, but we're not done yet. Witchfire Brew for any players who would use Witchfire Brew in the early game just for the increased damage over time, don't use it anymore. They remove the increased damage over time. Damage over time multiplier on medium cluster jewels. So medium cluster jewels now. Let me just go ahead and give you guys a good image shot here so you can see. Medium cluster jewels, aka these right here. You no longer have this fire damage over time multiplier baby node. So we lost 4, 8... 12, 
16% fire damage multiplier. On top of that, Burning Bright Notable used to be 8% fire multi, 8% AoE, and 20% fire damage. So that's 8, 16, 24, times 2, 48% fire multi, not including the 16% fire multi from the baby notes, right? They now made it so it lost the 20% fire damage and the 8 multi, and it is now just 25 burn. So drastic nerf to the damage on top of that. There is one buff that came from all of this, which is damage over time multiplier prefixes on weapons are now suffixes and can no longer roll as prefixes. Meaning your weapon that, to be fair, was not really that big of a deal for RF. I mean, it was if you had a sick weapon, but if you didn't have a strong weapon, it didn't really feel that bad. Now Righteous Fire is much more weapon dependent because we lost so many sources of fire multi and you can gain the sources of fire multi on your weapon, but crafting is kind of a pain in the ass right now, especially because, you know, Harvest keeps getting nerfed. Uh, I mean, at, you know, at the state it's in, it's pretty much, it's, it's very hard to understand it for a new player. And then Aceling crafting got completely destroyed. So not only is it more expensive to gear up, it's also harder to gear up Righteous Fire. So with all of these changes going, I am not really going to be league starting RF. I won't be putting out a build guide for RF until maybe halfway through the league or something. I would, however, really recommend players, if you want to play Righteous Fire, to start as Chieftain. Um, the reason I would recommend Chieftain is Chieftain is very good for a number of reasons. Number one, it's got Fire Multi that was pretty much removed from the game. So Ramako's Sunlight, very good. Hinakora's Death Fury is also very good because it's another way to increase your damage by lowering target's resistance via the um, cover rare or unique enemies in Ash. Another benefit is the massive built-in sustain and endurance charge scaling. Uh, endurance charges are very important for Righteous Fire because you're a build that goes melee, which means you need to mitigate physical damage. Previously, as Inquisitor, we would mitigate physical damage by having a high effective life pool and getting many sources of fizz conversion. However, we now need to gear a lot more offensively, meaning it's going to be just a lot more difficult to get everything set up. Chieftain, thankfully, has a lot of the basics kind of already fleshed out uh, with their natural tankiness, their natural built-in fizz conversion to fire, their natural built-in fire multi. So Chieftain is one of the more stronger picks. Expect, if you're playing Chieftain, to still kind of cruise through the axe, cruise through white tier maps, but I'm going to probably say that when you hit around T10, T11 maps, your damage on single target is just going to completely plummet unless you have big investment in your gear. I'm not saying Righteous Fire is not playable by any means, but I would not expect it to be like basically where it was in the past couple of leagues. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Uh, maybe I'll make another video in the near future kind of explaining other things. Uh, I'm going to go over my next build in the other video, which is basically explaining what I'm going to be League starting with, which is this character, which is not really beginner friendly at all, but it's kind of unique for me, so I'm excited. Anyway, catch you guys all later. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. I will have the document here posted uh, if you guys just kind of want to see. All I really did is went through the patch notes and pulled out what affected RF. So catch you guys later. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. If you did, please feel, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, we got more POE content coming in the next week. See you guys all later.